It's X-Men 97, we've got six of them. So join me as we take a look to see if these things are really worth the $24.99 or if these are just reused, repurposed piles of poop. And here's a little sneak peek. One of these is actually my hands down favorite. Let me know who you think it is down in the comments. So here we go, right off the bat, we got Wolverine, we've got Bishop, Storm, Magneto, Rogue, and Gambit. We got a pretty good team here by default. Obviously we're missing some key characters like Cyclops and stuff. It's a continuation of the original series from back in the day. So if this is more appropriately uh, designed from the show, then we're getting a little bit of a tease of how much these characters are gonna look different animation style from the original series. What I do like is that there's no cell shading. So if you didn't like the VHS collection because the cell shading, well, congratulations, it's all gone. Now we have truly accurate, I guess you gotta put quotes around that. So I have a couple retro X-Men figures and a couple VHS figures that we can take a look at in for the sake of comparison and try to look at the differences with the accessories because I'm gonna tell you right now, I think we're getting a little bit so where do we want to start, huh? Let's start with, uh, I guess, Rogue? So looking at the box art, you're getting, they're all the same except for you get the, which we just saw. I don't need to tell you all that again, but we're getting a group shot of all the figures that are available in this wave, which is nice. You kind of get to know what is available. We have no idea what's to come. And a downside with the packaging here from Marvel's, you never know who the artist is on the cover. If you know who did the artwork on the front of these things, please let me know. Now I want to start with Rogue because I do have the retro version of Rogue and they're pretty much the same from what I can see. So this is the new X-Men 97 versus the retro Rogue. We're getting the same exact accessories. She looks like she's basically the same build uh, with a new head sculpt, of course. Upper torso, jacket is different. Obviously the coloring is different, but here we go with the retro one, which has a, a warmer yellow tone here. And then this brighter yellow and the green. I don't know how I feel like the this obviously not a perfect line of work here uh, between the two colors. So looking at some of the differences here with Rogue, we're gonna see, let's start at the bottom. So we have the kneecap on the old one had this separated boot top, which was nice because you kind of got this visually separated from the knee. Downside was this green band, which was super annoying. The new one, it is all sculpted and honestly looks super cheap in comparison. So the way the boot is wrapped around the, the sculpt here, just it lowers the quality big time. It's It seems to be mostly an all new sculpt as well. So there's a difference between the way the, the foot and boot is sculpted. So this is more simplified where there's some wrinkles and things going on here. That top of that boot looks so cheap because the way the paint it's just bleeding in from the green to the yellow. I am not really a fan of that. And really the green seems like it's undercoated. Up next, the belt obviously is a big difference. It's a new sculpt on the belt. I think the waist is a new sculpt. It's clearly new. It's smaller in some areas. <laughs> the head sculpt is totally different. The hair looks really good. It very much has a tune look. So let's go a little bit deeper into the details of this new figure. So I like that this is all sculpted as a new jacket and that it is animation accurate with the green. The hair with this animation look is really nice. I guess we're just in that phase now for Marvel where they can make better head sculpts, the digital printing and stuff for the colors, the eyes, that actually looks really nice. And I like that there's something a little bit more cartoon accurate. I don't know. There's there's still a lot of differences, but so many similarities. This is a little tough. I think if I were going to go with one particularly, I have not seen the new animation and she doesn't look like the old animation. She looks like whatever the new one's going to be. So I think we're going to put in this scenario where if you're wanting stuff because of the nostalgia of the old animation, so far we're not quite getting it. And I, I think I like this one the most. There's just something about that extra big hair <laughs> that looks a little bit more or, uh, you know, retro, maybe more comic book. Accessories are identical. So you get a hand holding her other glove and you get the hand that is uh, ready to reach out and touch someone. Now, the one that came on the retro figure is a little unique. I, I don't really know why this was the choice of the hand, <laughs> but the new one seems a little bit more appropriate, but also probably just pulled from some previous figure that they've made. This one just seems visually inappropriate. And if you want to support the channel, you can do it by looking super cool on the streets in this all new shirt. 
That's right, I have a new shirt featuring Rogue. And this is hands down my favorite drawing that I have done to date. And it one day will be available as a poster, but for now, available as a shirt or sticker. Thank you so much, enjoy. Link in the description. Up next, we've got Storm. Now, I do like this animation style. I love the new haircut and stuff. And right off the bat, you can see that this is a box of disappointment. <laughs> when compared to the previous version, this is the VHS collection, you actually get effects. And if you're gonna do a Storm figure, you need to do some effects. What happened here? That looks really bad. <laughs> oh my God, I never noticed this before. How did I not notice this? All right, maybe that's why they didn't do this. But good God, like having effects for a storm, even if it's this or the jelly ones that wrap around the hands. Accessory wise, I mean, she's got two fists and then two open hands. She has two open hands and two electric hands. So I think when it comes down to head sculpts and colors and overall details, I, I, I actually like this face a lot better, but I love this haircut. This doesn't look really at all like the animation from the box. It's not awful. It's pretty close, but I think they could have done a little bit better work on the sculpting here for the storm. So we've got some digital work again for the paint that's going on with the eyes. It's it's not an awful figure by any means. I think this is it's still really good looking. I had no idea that the hair came down the back though. <laughs> so it's like this weird mohawk mullet thing. I don't like this rat tail that's on the back of Storm. <laughs> oh God. Oh no. Is that in the animation? God, maybe it looks better in the animation. So she's got the foldy flappy shoulder pads, which are fine. The sleeves are reduced in size, which is a little bit more modern. She doesn't have that 80s vibe that's going on here, especially with that hair. But these sleeves real thick, but I do like this face sculpt a lot. That is a good looking storm. We could just have a combination of this face with this hair minus the rat tail <laughs> it would have been perfect. I think the biggest misstep here is the fact that she has no accessories for her effects, her powers or anything. Overall, I think these are good looking figures, both of them. For Marvel Legends stuff, they, they're nice, but you guys let me know which of these storms are the perfect storm. Up next is the Cajun. And that artwork looks fine. It does very much look like the original version from the early 90s. And with the new version, you can see that there are some similar accessories. We got the single card, we've got the multi-card effect, we've got a bow staff, we do not have the extra hand. This is kind of interesting. So on the new version, you get just the hands that are in there and then this effect version. So you're missing out on this other hand, the l other left hand, the extra one. <laughs> Obviously there are huge differences in the colors. You have a very toned down, no metallic colors going on here in the body. This is like a very much a shimmery kind of purple look, more comic look for him. This does have more of that animation style. The hair looks awesome. It's got a little bit of stubble on the chin, which is nice. It could probably use a little bit more. Now the bodies you can see are pretty much the same thing all the way throughout. The jacket is new, the head is new. Otherwise, it's just the paint colors that's different. The lower waist is exactly the same in this guy. You get the pins, the cuts, the all, the, all of it is the same stuff. So this guy is the least changed out of all of them. You get a jacket, and a head, and that's it. And I really was fine with this guy, but I never really cared for his, the, the look on his, his face look. His look face, <laughs> he didn't look right. Looking at the difference in the accessories, obviously the new one is the bluish tone. We have this power effect, and I will say the effects look way nicer in the new version, so this really bright, purpley, pink color that's going on with, for his effects is really, really good. Obviously there's a change in the cards, a little more detail in the card. Same thing here. So we have more details going on in the cards in a brighter effect color, but yeah, exactly the same piece. I guess you're gonna have to go with Mayfax or something if you really want a perfect gambit to get that cloth jacket. It's not awful here, but if he's anything like the previous version, his hand ends up being way too loose for the staff. Yeah, it, it's still too loose. You can't really get a good grip on it. It slides through all the time. And that is a big problem that I have with the previous version. Up next, we have Magneto, which I do not have another version of. And again, it's it's probably a lot of reused parts. So we don't need to get too excited because I'm sure we're gonna see some similar pieces here with Magneto. But again, nice box art, it's simple. 
It's a nice subtle change because uh, he didn't look a lot different. He, he didn't look a lot different. Huge downside to this is that it, he has nothing in here. This is stupid. And does his helmet come off? No. So you just get the one look. There is no helmetless Magneto. There's no alternate head. You just get punching hands and these hands, which I guess are his, I'm going to manipulate metal. And that's it. This is weird. He's a pinless figure, which is a nice change from Gambit. But so far, three out of four are pinless. This is a good looking body. He's got some uh, deep shoulder articulation, it looks like. The cape is plugged into the back. It, it's still, it's like deeply glued into the front though. So you cannot have him really without the cape, which is, is fine. I mean, he would look weird without it. This is just like a really unique joint that has really good range without technically having the butterfly joints, which is, that's pretty cool. As far as just, if you need a good Magneto, I think this is fine. It's just a huge bummer to not have the other accessories, like some kind of power effect or something. The articulation is good. You're gonna just want a nice flight stand and have him posing, floating, looking menacing, and I guess he's a good guy now. What are we gonna, what are we gonna see in the new stuff? Now, the next up is gonna be this Bishop, which I think I'm the most excited for because this guy looks really, really good. And seeing him at San Diego Comic-Con, I was very excited. So what do we get in the box? We get a couple extra hands, gun hands, simple, and we get one gun, which is incredibly simplified. It's just gray and that's it which is a bummer. The Bishop itself looks absolutely stunning. It's got a lot of matte finish going on, which I think is kind of missing from some of these other figures. And I cannot say anything else. <laughs> so looking at the difference between these two, you can see there's a huge difference between the finish. Now he's still glossy in the body, but all of this is skin, the sleeves and stuff. All of this is a matte finish, which looks really, really good. And I think if you're going to pull something from an animation, give it that matte look versus this, which has a shiny look and I'm not that big of a fan of, but he's beefy. He is a big boy. There's a lot of new stuff going on here. I don't have any other bishops to compare him to, but he is, this body looks completely unique, thick. Look how incredible this is. This is a full new figure. I think the gun goes in the holster just fine but the details of this Bishop are outstanding. This so far might be the best in the lineup in my opinion. And it's while I was excited about it, it's still a total surprise that he might be the number one figure in the line. I just wish the matte finish went everywhere. It's just hit or miss. So the whole body is gloss, but then the arm sleeves, most of the legs are matte. This exceeds expectations. But let's get on with the next one. Last in the lineup is our main man, our boy, Logan. We're Wolverine. You might not know him as Logan, but that's okay. That's what his friends call him. I do have the VHS one. I do not know where the accessories are. Not even sure that he came with accessories, to be honest. There's going to be some similarities already. Obviously, the dookie cell shading, which kind of ruins him. <laughs> but this new head sculpt is looking real good. So let's try to compare as much as we can. Neither of the faces that come with the new one are angry. They're just, I mean, he's kind of angry, but there's no teeth gritting. He's got some stubble on his chin. Otherwise, we're looking at a lot of similar design here because it is a Wolverine. There's gonna be some parts that are reused throughout, but then the new upper arms, we are now pinless on this Wolverine, which is really nice, even down through the legs. The yellows look to be pretty much the exactly the same on the two of these. You just, the cell shading really changes up the way this guy looks. They're mere copies of each other. It's just some subtle changes like in the arms, the face, the coloring. One of the best examples of an animated Wolverine that we've ever had. A lot of hair sculpt, <laughs> which does look kind of funny. And that little bit of change in the face, the painting for the stubble is, is very helpful for this figure. You get all the stuff you would want for a Wolverine figure, which primarily being one, his short, two, he's got great butterfly joints to give some epic poses. And then this alternate head now has where his mask is down. And I think that is a huge plus and something that the Mondo figure also failed to do. And if you haven't watched that video, please go. That's a, this is a big disappointment, disappointing figure, but he didn't have the little mask 
down version. But in the box, you get a couple fists with no uh, claws, and then you get fists with claws. So he has no other options. He can't grab anything or do anything. This head sculpt looks great though. The coloring, I like this a lot. So a maskless Wolverine, this is a really nicely done figure, sculpt, thing, paint, whatever. What am I trying to say? I don't know. What do we got here? Now, the obvious things to talk about are swapping the heads. Now, the figures that I have both versions of, and that makes sense because you cannot switch the gambits as you have a purple versus black. Now here with Wolverine, obviously, yes, you can change them because they're pretty much the exact same thing. So if you want the new unmasked version on the animated cell shaded version, you can do that. And then if you swap them, you want the gritting teeth on the new version, it's fine. The yellow is there. However, you do get this cell shaded spot. So you might not want to, I don't know. The coloring of the skin is obviously also different. So that's a much brighter, a little pinker. Regarding Storm, so the heads do swap over. There's a skin tone difference, obviously. Putting the new head on the old body is also very wobbly. The old head on the new body technically works, but again, you get a skin tone difference. So the darker tone on the new body. And lastly, Rogue. The difference, these heads are swapped now. So the belt, the ball pegs are set up differently and I'll show you that. But this does look a little weird because it's, it sits up higher on this body. But if you like the big hair, I guess technically you can make that work. If you like the new head on the old body, you can still technically make that work, but she does look like her neck is a little too short. And this is why. So the new design is the more standard with the ball joint thing going on with the neck. And then the old one is really just a very simplified peg. This one you can actually get some poses out of because the head does have range, which is nice. So if you want a flying rogue, guess what? You can kind of get it. So that is six all new X-Men 1997 versions of X-Men. And the good thing here is that you get this Bishop and this Bishop is the crowning champion out of the set. There's no doubt he is a fantastic figure. Everything about it, the, the sculpt, the coloring, the face is my favorite part. It just looks so good. And that matte finish is stunning. So let me rank these instead of just kind of going in a weird way about it. So number one, without a doubt, is Bishop. It's fantastic. Number two is going to be Wolverine because it's great. Three, Magneto because it's just a good looking Magneto. And I don't know. Next would be Rogue because that face sculpt is good looking. Then from there, we got this Gambit because that head sculpt, that hair is fantastic. It is definitely a more cartoon accurate face uh he's just lower on their list because he's just not he wasn't that great before and he's basically the same thing and then the storm because i hate these things they're so cheap looking and the fact that she doesn't have any power effects is a huge bummer and she could really benefit from a nice mattifying because it's hard to look at this face no matter how you get the lighting the lights just hit too much and her skin's just a little too dewy for a cartoon is the, this is what they should have based everything off of. Just give us all new everything. And someone's gonna go in the comments and say like, no, we've had that body build before or something, but I don't think so. There's this pinless, it's beautiful, whatever. I'm happy, I'm a happy boy uh, halfway. So are these things worth the $24.99 or should you just have kept some of the older stuff? Now, I think based on watching this video, you'll have made that decision already for yourself. Yeah, you know what, I'll just keep some of the older things. I think I got, probably 15 versions of a Wolverine. Not me, that's you talking. You probably have 15 versions of a Wolverine that you like better. The best thing about this line and what makes it actually worth buying is the fact that they are all from one representation. They all match, they complement each other. There's no cell shading on some, there's no comic accuracy on another that doesn't line up and looks, you know. So I think you're getting your cartoon animated stuff, even if it is X-Men 97. That was a lot of stuff, I know. And thank you so much for sticking around to the end because, uh, Man, I'm exhausted and you know, you spent less time because I have to edit this thing down to a reasonable thing. Why am I still talking? Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. And if you want to see what a good X-Men figure looks like, then watch that video there because it is the hands down best version of a Jubilee we have ever seen and probably ever will. So, well, enjoy.